Hello everyone, and welcome back. My name is Moose Henderson, I'm a wildlife photographer. Today we're going to take a look at the NRL RT-90C use in the field. I previously reviewed this tripod about six or eight months ago and gave a rundown of its features and, and my impressions of it. And today I'm going to give you an in the field example of use of this tripod. I've owned it for a little over a year now and so I feel like I can give you a pretty good rundown. So let's get started. Okay, we're back now. When I first get the tripod out of the car, it's all collapsed, like you see here. On the top of my tripod, I have a Wimberley head, and then these pads that you see are knee pads for when I'm down low to the ground. They also help to protect my shoulder when I'm carrying the tripod. Gives me a little bit of uh, extra padding so that the tripod doesn't dig into my shoulder. So when I get it out of the car and I need to expand it, the first thing I do is to open up the two bottom legs. And I expand the two bottom legs. I do not expand the very top leg. I'm five foot two and so I don't need it all the way expanded like some people may. And you can see here that even with just the two bottom legs expanded, it's plenty high for my needs. Then I grab my camera and I stick it on the top of the head. Then I make sure that it's secure before I, le before I let go. One other thing to check every time on your tripod is this little lever down here. Make sure it's all the way down. That's what holds the, the leveling head into the bottom of the tripod. So that kind of gives you an idea of what the tripod sets up like. Then I'll do a basic level, say maybe a little bit right there, and just a hair right here. And then if I need to adjust any further, I can do it with the, the leveling head. And that allows me to do a really quick adjustment. Now if I'm on uneven ground, and maybe I need to extend one leg more than the other, it's pretty simple because I haven't expanded the top legs. And so I can just reach down, grab the top legs, and expand those and that way I don't have to bend all the way down to the ground to try and expand the bottom leg or something like that. If I need to shorten one leg that's easy enough to do. Same way it's right here where I grab hold of things. Now let's take a look at how this works when we go down low to the ground. So we're going to put this up on our shoulder and then we're going to collapse these legs because when we're low to the ground we don't need these legs all the way expanded. These twist locks are not as good as like on a Gizu tripod or a really right stuff tripod because you have to twist them uh, a good half a turn in order to get them to open up. And uh, the Gitsu and the Really Right Stuff is really great 
in the sense that you don't need to turn them very much. Now when I go down low to the ground, I do get my, uh, my knee pads on. Okay, so we have our knee pads on. We can get down here on the ground and say we're shooting squirrels or something and we want the tripod to be really low. It has adjustment in order to lower the legs right here on the very top. And you just pull these out and the legs come out nice and low. Now you can see that's, that's relatively low there, but we can still even go lower if we want to. Say we want to really get low to the ground. We're touching the ground now with our, our leveling head. So that is about as low as we, we can go. I do have a ground pod that I can get even lower to the ground, but that just gives you an idea that this tripod does go very low to the ground. From uh, the base of my my Wimberley head to the ground is maybe five inches or so. Of course, the Wimberley head is up off the ground a bit more, so that adds a little bit of distance. Okay, let's see how I carry this tripod. Okay, so we've got our tripod expanded back out again. I'm gonna put these pads back in their, their location. Okay, so you can see I have the pads back on the tripod. In order to carry my tripod, I just throw it over my shoulder like this, and then I collapse the legs, and that way I can carry it like this. The padding sits right on my shoulder and helps to protect me from the tripod digging in as I bounce up and down the landscape. Then when I get to somewhere that I want to set up, I grab one of the legs and expand things like this, set the tripod down, and I'm ready to go. Okay, when I'm done shooting, I rotate my, my Wimberley head around, I lock it down, I pick up the tripod, set it on my shoulder, then I collapse the three legs and I carry it like this. That way I can go to wherever I need to go. I see something else I want to shoot. I pull the legs like this, I expand them, I set it down. I'm ready to shoot pretty quickly. The pad really helps to protect my arm and part of my neck from the tripod from things digging in. Another thing you'll notice is I have my Wimberley head on the left hand side. Most people put it on the right hand side because they feel like it obstructs their holding the lens. But because of the way I hold my lens, I put it on the left. That way I can look over the right hand side. So I put my hand like this, it's underneath the knob and then up over the top of the camera and that helps to steady the camera anytime that uh, I'm using it. It's very important to steady it. I can also put my arm under here and provide a little bit of steady. I like having the knobs right here where I can adjust them. I don't have to take my hand off the shutter release. I can do a vertical or a horizontal. I've got the use of the knobs right here by my hand and then it's very easy to steady the camera. So that gives you a rough rundown of the NRL in the field. I've had this tripod for over a year and it has served me very well. I've not had any problems. The only minor complaint that I have is the legs require a little bit more of a twist to be able to expand the legs than either a Gitsu or a really right stuff type of tripod would. But the current price of this, I just looked on Amazon, is like $317. It is a carbon fiber tripod. It is as beefy and sturdy as the Gitsus and the really right stuffs, but it's uh, about a third to a fourth of the price of those. If you were to get a really right stuff with the leveling head 
and and things like that, it would cost you roughly in the neighborhood of twelve hundred dollars. And this at uh, three hundred and seventeen dollars is a real deal. And like I say, I haven't had any problems with it all. No slippage, no issues with the legs holding tight or any other types of problems. So I would really recommend this tripod if you're on a budget. If you've got unlimited money and it really doesn't matter, tripods are pretty much a one-time expense. So it's worth buying the very best that you can afford, but not all of us can uh, shell out twelve dollars to $1,300 for a good sturdy tripod. And when you're using a big long lens like this, this is a 600 millimeter lens attached onto a Canon EOS R body. Occasionally, I also attach on a 1.4 tele extender. You're talking about a lot of weight and a lot of magnification, so you need a really sturdy tripod. I hope this has been useful for you. Do make sure to watch my other video about the RT 90C tripod that included uh, a studio view of various parts of the tripod and stuff. I'll link that up here in the top where you guys can go and watch that video also. And if you would hit the like icon and subscribe to our channel for a lot more content in the coming weeks. We generally put out a, a video every couple of days and at least every week. Thank you so much and I appreciate you guys following our channel. Feel free to ask any questions in the comments down below and I'll make sure to respond. See you next time.